My name is Lindsay Cernu, and this is On Air with Heritage Action, a podcast built for conservatives. Twice a week, we break down in five-ish minutes or less how you can get involved today in the fight for conservative values. Last week, just a handful of legislators locked out the rest of Congress to work out a backroom deal to get a $1.5 trillion government funding package together. You may have missed this in the news last week because members of the D.C. swamp don't want you to know about these behind closed doors deals going on. So that $1.5 trillion government funding package contained 2,741 pages of text to review. This would have taken the average reader over 90 hours or almost four days straight to read the entire bill. But House lawmakers were presented with just 24 hours between when they were presented with that text and when they were required to vote on passage. And once the House voted to send this on to the upper chamber, senators had just two days until the vote. So without even reading the bill, the House and Senate voted to send this massive package to the president's desk. So what exactly was in it? Our elected officials certainly don't know. Each year, Congress tries to slip in a ton of pork into these bloated government funding packages, hoping we won't notice. And this year's package is no different. So let's go over some of the top line numbers. This year's package increases non-defense discretionary spending alone by $46 billion, and it finances it with deficit spending. If that price tag alone didn't shock you, the radical progressive policies inside the bill will. It doubles down on the Green New Deal-style government subsidies for green energy and climate policies, such as a historic level of funding for energy efficiency and renewable energy, just what we need right now. It also includes more than $4 billion in earmarks, which were airdropped into the package without transparency or thorough vetting. Actually, more than 300 pages of the bill are earmarks alone, which is just crazy. Also in this bill, taxpayer funds will flow to, you guessed it, Planned Parenthood, through $286 million in funding to the Title X program. And even though Democrats have yet to get their Build Back Better or Build Back Broke bill passed, this bill would also help them deliver on one of BBB's most, actually least popular provisions, the weaponization of the IRS by providing the agency with its largest funding increase in two decades. Also, the authors of this bill decided to include a flawed reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, or VAWA, which we've discussed on the program before. The new policies would redirect the focus of of VAWA away from protecting biological women to include gender identity language and would emphasize equity over equality. And it's all in the name of wokeness. So look, the corporate media did not do their jobs as watchdogs as Congress slipped millions of dollars of funding for these radical progressive policies into this year's bill to fund the government. But what's even worse is that there were 173 Republican elected officials in Congress who voted yes on this package. Yeah, you heard that right, 173 Republicans who were voted into office by their constituents to protect the American taxpayer and enact conservative policies in Washington, actually voted to advance this bloated, radical spending package. In the House, 155 Republicans joined Democrats in advancing this. That means 54 Republicans voted against the measure. After the House voted to advance the legislation, less than two days later, 68 Republican and Democrat senators voted to put this package onto the president's desk to sign it. Again, quite a few Republicans joined Democrats here, but... There is a silver lining, a little bit of good news. It's that more than half of GOP senators stood with you and voted no on this legislation. Slowly but surely, we're changing how Washington and Republicans think about bloated spending packages, which is good news. This rushed process is really in the name of meeting an artificial self-imposed deadline, and it's Congress at its worst. Once again, it has guaranteed a terrible product that will provide tens of billions of dollars in additional funding for the Biden administration to further fuel their self-created crises. In fact, for the first time since 2011, federal appropriations are no longer subject to the modest limitations imposed by the Budget Control Act. And it shows. I mean, it's a $1.5 trillion spending package. And it gives members of Congress who didn't even read the bill a false choice between keeping the lights on and supporting runaway spending. The elected officials that we are sending to Congress need to start acting as voices for us, the American people, and stop these backroom swampy deals from happening. They said they'd do this on the campaign trail, but many of them didn't, so it's time that they hear from us. 
Heritage Action key voted this government spending bill last week. So please go check out the vote breakdown and see how your member voted at heritageaction.com slash key dash votes. We'll put it on screen and we'll also put it in the description. So see how your member of Congress voted and let them know how you feel. They voted to stop this bill. Tell them thank you. They need to hear from you on that. They chose to stand up to a corrupt system and act as a voice for you, the American taxpayer. They voted for the omnibus. Let them know that you are disappointed in their actions. Our elected officials need to hear from their constituents, so be sure to check out that key vote and give them a call today. That's it for another episode of On Air with Heritage Action. Thank you for tuning in. If you like what you heard in today's episode, please click the follow button. If you want to receive a text message each time a new episode airs, text podcast to 51776 and you'll never miss an episode. That's podcast to 51776. Hi, it's me again, and we need your help. If you like the insights and activist resources that we're providing, please take just one minute and help us spread the word. So follow, like, subscribe, and share this episode of On Air with Heritage Action with your friends and family on social media or even over email or text. We need your help to get others involved in the fight to hold Washington accountable. And don't forget, you are also able to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcasting app on your smartphone. So in app, you're going to search for On Air with Heritage Action and subscribe so you can download episodes and listen on the go. It's the best way to make sure you never miss a thing. Thanks.